building this massive anti-war movement around the world. So here it is, Madea Benjamin. And I'm with the peace group called Code Pink in the United States. And it's a great honor for me to address the Stop the War Coalition, our wonderful ally over this last 20 years. I'll never forget when we were together at the World Social Forum and Chris Nynam and others from the Stop the War Coalition said, why don't we have a global day of action to protest the upcoming threat of war in Iraq? And we, there was a roar from the crowd and we said, yes, let's do it. And indeed, there was that February 15, 2003 day that the world said no to war. And while we weren't able to stop the war, we certainly reflected the global sentiment against going into war, and we've continued to do that for the last 20 years, to point out the lies, the destruction, the horrors of these 20 years of response to the 9-11 attacks. In the case of Afghanistan, it was easy to convince people to go to war because, at least in the U.S., there was a thirst for revenge. But when it came to Iraq, it was harder. And that's why our governments, including Tony Blair in the UK, had to lie to the people, telling us that there were weapons of mass destruction when there weren't, telling us that there were ties between Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda when there weren't. And I remember going to Iraq with a group of women from the United States before the US began the bombing, and women telling us, please, we do not like Saddam Hussein, but we don't want you to liberate us with your bombs. And we see how that, quote, liberation has been so disastrous for the people of Iraq. Our friends there are either dead, maimed, dispersed around the world. And we here in the United States barely even talk about all of the violence that we unleashed in Iraq, the sectarian violence that didn't exist before, the creation of ISIS that has now spread way beyond Iraq and is a justification for continued U.S. and NATO intervention around the world. After the 20th anniversary in Afghanistan and the pullout of U.S. NATO troops, the world can now see the disaster that that has been. And we see the 20 years and a return of the Taliban and trillions of dollars spent and countless lives of Afghans lost as well as thousands of our own soldiers has only fed this war machine that continues to be hungry for the next war. And that's why it's so important that we come together across the Atlantic, the UK and the US particularly, to stop the next war, which they are aiming for, which is a war on China. Most recently, we see how the US and the UK have convinced the Australians not to work with France, but with our countries and our companies to produce these nuclear-powered submarines that is only fueling the tension in the South China Seas and fueling a conflict with China. It's interesting how it was France early on before going into the war in Iraq that warned us and said, this is not a good idea. And now we see France being pushed out and the war hawk countries of the US and the UK fueling this new conflict. So once again, we have so much work to do to get our countries out of the Middle East, to stop a new war from China, with China, and also to stop our countries from selling or quote, giving weapons to the most repressive countries around the world, including Israel, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. So I look forward to continuing to work with you at the Stop the War Coalition so that we can change our government's foreign policies, we can stop the madness of, of fueling this war machine, and we can get on track to have our countries focusing on diplomacy, on the real threats to our world, which is the climate crisis, and the pandemic we now face, and global poverty and global racism, and stop fueling hatred, war, and militarism. Stop the war. Let's do it.